Welcome back guys to the new best early build with 1 million damage and 100% free items. You no longer have to spend any money on those stupid helix sets, you no longer have to get any of those stupid engravings, you don't have to pay any cent to Ubisoft anymore and you will still get the same damage or close to getting the same damage as in my previous early builds. We will be breaking the rules of making builds in this game in such a fundamental way which I have never done before in any other build. This is the build you have all been waiting for. You will get over 1 million damage when you attack a polo mark, you will get over 400% Volra damage, 230% critical damage and over 40% crit chance. And we will even use armor penetration early on for the first time ever. That is a key element to actually achieve almost the same and even more damage early on compared to the other previous build. The range damage will actually be higher than in our build which was soaked up with all those filthy shop items. And you also don't have to activate something which only lasts for a couple of seconds. This damage is real and you will get it every time. But let's first take a look at the damage values for this build because they are just as close as in the previous build. We have 28,000 damage with the light attack, we have 41,000 with our heavy attack and we will have over 120,000 when we do a charged heavy attack. Of course it is mandatory that they crit. We will have 200,000 with Fury of the Bloodline and over 300,000 with an overpower animation cancel. This is almost as good as in our previous level 22 build where we used the stupid Typhoon's Axe so you will now get the same damage even without doing that. And when you attack Polomarks when they are sleeping with an overpower animation cancel you will get over 1 million damage. The range damage will be over 180,000 with a devastating shot and even over 200,000 with a predator shot. This is even more damage than we got with the filthy Nemean Lion set. And of course with rush assassinations it is no problem to overrun mercenaries and polomarks and even with a normal assassination if it crits you can overrun a mercenary with absolute ease. And don't forget that you can also use your torch to heal yourself. So if you ever get in trouble when you are hit for the first time, simply pull out your torch, put it back to heal yourself without having to use second wind for that. This will really help you to survive because the game never kills you in a single hit so make sure that you always pull out your torch and use the healing glitch. But in order to make this build we have to do some crazy preparation and this time this also includes completing the whole Fidias questline. You have to meet him in Elis and then he will give you a contract to collect 4 symbols from 4 distinct statues scattered across Greece. While the first one is located in Elis in the Temple of Zeus, the second one is located on Kytera Island on a viewpoint statue, the third one is located on Poseidon's Trident on a very lonely remote island and the last one is located in Tazan city right at the center in the market. But that was actually the easy part because after that you have to sneak in the ancient stronghold on Lemnos which is scattered with level 43 enemies. You can only get into the key room when you whistle and look these enemies away and then sneak in from the other side. Then simply enter the code and get the Atlantean blade. The Atlantean blade will unlock the armor penetration engraving. Of course you also have to get the Corfu engraving, for that you have to complete the Mega Reese story arc, then go back to Cephalonia, start the Great Escape, ignore all the warnings, collect your clothes, talk to Barnabas and then you are able to explore the whole island. You have to go to the north to the Koilidi farm and collect the riddle for the champion Ostraka. The solution for the champion Ostraka is at the northeastern point of the island and that will unlock the plus 100% damage but minus 100% Resistances. This engraving is incredibly powerful because you can also engrave it on your armor. Of course don't forget to get all the mandatory abilities because these are the low hanging fruits in your build and you can get a huge amount of bonuses by just getting the right abilities. And to engrave your gear correctly you also have to solve a couple of ostracars and there's a complete guide at the end of this video which shows you exactly which ones you have to get to make this work. But now let's finally talk about this build. We have over 8000 warrior damage and 50000 assassin damage. Of course we will also use the big bow because it is the most important item in the game. 
It adds all its DPS to your left melee weapon, multiplying your left melee weapon with a factor of 1.6 compared to the other one and you will also use that 8000 Vora damage to shoot your arrows. So you will replace your hunter damage with your Vora damage, which makes it so incredibly powerful. Since you have 200 free helix credits, you can actually get this item for free. That is why I claim this build is completely free, but of course only if you use your 200 free helix credits to get the big hunt bow which everybody should do anyway. And then we are doing some very unique stuff here because we are totally mixing up legendary items, set items and epic items in our armor. In fact we will use two items from the Ezio set and two items from the Northern Traveler set. Because the set bonuses from the Ezio set are really rubbish and the set bonus from the Northern Traveler set is only really useful once you get the Atlantis DLC. So we can completely ignore that and simply pick the best items for that build. So mixing up those two sets will actually give you a much better build than if you only make one complete build with one of these sets. And some of these items are actually even better than the Nemean Lion set. But I will explain you that when we are at one of those items. Let's check the items in the same order as usual. We will start with a perfect epic sword with warrior damage, critical damage and damage sword, which is our haters harper. And here we will engrave the new unlocked 30% armor penetration, which is an incredible bonus and is just as strong as another 100% damage, especially early on and especially with arrows. Armor penetration is also the main reason why our range attacks are stronger than in the builds that used the Nemean Lion set, which did not have this engraving. You can get Hater's Harper when you complete the Friend in Need quest in Attica. Make sure that you lie to Hater to keep the sword at the end of this quest. Our second sword will be the Sword of Axon, which has warrior damage, damage swords and fire damage and here we will engrave the 100% damage but health cap to 25%. This sword is almost identical to Hater Sarper, so it is also almost a perfect sword and you can loot that in the Parthenon chest in Athens. On the Beacon Bow of course you can go for the 2% additional crit chance and engrave that, but the better option is actually to use a 20% damage with Devastating Shot. Because Devastating Shot is probably the most used ability in this build since it is the easiest and most versatile shot to use for Hunter players, but of course you can engrave any other ability enhancer as well. It is actually better to focus on one ability here I think instead of just engraving 4% warrior damage. So you have the option to go for 2% crit chance, 4% warrior damage, 4% assassin damage, that is not really useful, so instead go for 20% with whatever ability you use the most. Then on our headgear we will use the Ezio's Roman Hood. That will give you assassin damage but that is no problem because the Ezio set is focused on damage swords. So we get the damage swords and we can engrave another 10% crit chance at full health when we unlock the Ostracas for that. So having the Ezio's Hood is way better than having the Nemean Lion set because the Nemean Lion set does not have damage swords on it. And the Northern Traveler set also does not have damage swords. So the best best item you already have in your inventory for your helmet is actually the easier suit. So you should use that and you can also engrave the crit chance on it, which is absolutely perfect for the hood. Of course you could also go for a perfect epic item that has warrior damage, damage swords and critical damage, but I want to make it as easy as possible for you to make this build. And the amount you gain by getting the perfect epic item is actually only the 15% crit damage. So especially early on the bonus from an additional engraving is not that much. But of course the importance of an additional engraving changes dramatically the higher the level you get. For our bracers we will also use the bracers from the Ezio set because they have a 3% crit chance engraving already on them which is a higher bonus than the 2% we could engrave by ourselves. So here we get a 1% additional crit chance just because it is already on the item and we can still engrave the 50% crit damage while full health. A perfect epic bracers of course would have warrior damage, 3% crit chance, 15% critical damage and then you engrave the 50% crit damage at full health. So Again, similar to the hood, you also only lose 15% crit damage compared to a perfect epic item when you use the Aesius Bracers. And on lower levels, that's a sacrifice you can actually make to avoid grinding the blacksmith. But if you want the perfect stats, then definitely go for the epic items. 
On the belt we use a Northern Traveler's Waist because that one is now better than one of the easiest items. We have warrior damage, 5% oral damage, again 3% crit chance and we also engrave 50% critical damage at full health. The nice touch here of the Northern Traveler set is that we get an additional engraving on our legendary items. In fact we get 5% all damage, that doesn't sound much, but this engraving is actually a fixed 5%. Normally at level 20 you would only have 2% all damage, not 5%. And those 5% all damage are actually better than engraving 4% warrior damage or 4% assassin damage, which you would normally do. So having 5% of both is actually way better than having just 5% or 4% assassin damage. But you have to be aware that these 5% all damage will never change. So as you level up, those 5% will become more and more useless. So at max level, having 5% all damage is totally rubbish and you should not use this item. But at level 21 or level 22, this item is actually even better than any epic item you could get from the blacksmith. On the torso you should go for an epic item with warrior damage, 15% critical damage and 6% assassin damage. Then you can engrave the plus 100% damage but minus 100% resistances from the Corfo DLC. This will stack with the 100% damage but health cap to 25% and you don't really have any additional negative effect. However, if you don't want to grind for the perfect epic piece, then of course you could also use either the Ezio set torso or the Northern Traveler set torso. Both of them have either assassin damage or warrior damage and critical damage. The Ezio set doesn't have any additional perk and the Northern Traveler set has an additional damage of heavy blades, which you would probably not use. But if you want to increase your warrior damage, then go for the Northern Traveler's breastplate and simply use it but the epic piece is actually the best option you could go for. On the boots then again we will use the Northern Traveler's boots with 11% warrior damage, the fixed 5% all damage boost. It also has 6% elemental resistance which is the waste, but here on this item we can engrave the 10% crit chance while full health. We cannot do that on the Ezio set boots because the Ezio set's boots already have crit chance on them. So using the Northern Traveler set boots is actually the best option you could have. Or you look for an epic item which should have warrior damage, then 4% assassin damage and 30% crit damage at full health. That way you will actually be able to get the additional 30% crit damage and still be able to engrave the 10% crit chance by yourself. That will give us a total stats of over 400% warrior damage, 27% damage with swords, 41% crit chance, you can make that 43% if you engrave it on the bow, we have 200% crit damage and even 52% fire damage which will further increase our damage when we use fire attacks. Of course we have the big minus 100% negative resistance here but that shouldn't bother you because the game never kills you in a single hit and you can simply heal yourself with a torch. And all these stats are just achieved by using free items the game offers you or you even already start with. To make this build you will need around 30 ability points and if you still need a couple more then simply check out the guide at the end because when you collect all the ostracars which you also need there are a couple of tombs really close by so that's not a long ride to get the missing points for it. You should definitely invest your points in 6 cents because that slows down time and it not only helps you with your hunter damage it also helps you when doing assassinations. You should put 2 points into arrow master to unlock your fire arrows, then use devastating shot as your strongest shot and fully upgrade archery master. Then for the warrior abilities you should go for charged heavy attack that triples your heavy attack damage, weapons master for additional crit chance, flaming attacks to activate the typhoon's fury ability, fire mastery for 40% additional fire damage, use 2 points for the overpower attacks and also 2 points on fury of the bloodline. Ring of Chaos should be saved for later because it is really weak if you only have level 2 abilities. Don't forget second wind for the health refill and in the assassin tree of course shadow assassin for the crit damage and assassin damage, rush assassination for the best assassin ability and stealth master for the additional out of combat damage overnight. If you now need a perfect route to collect all the stuff that is required by this build then definitely use this route. You will start at Kefalonia with the Melisani caves. There's a riddle, you can collect this tablet and the solution is at the statue in that bottomless lake. Then after that you will travel to Megaris and in Megaris there's another Ostraka location. The riddle is on the farm of Tripodiscos and the solution for that is at the ships at the dock, right at this spot. Don't forget to collect the ability point in the tomb of Alcatus when you are in Megaris 
And also don't forget to activate the fast travel point because I usually forget this one. After that fast travel to Delphi, activate the fast travel point of the temple of Apollo and then close by there's the tomb of the first Pythia. Also solve this tomb to get another ability point and then fast travel back to Megaris. Then you can simply go northward to activate the abandoned watchtower fast travel point and south of that watchtower is the tomb of Eteocles for another ability point. Then head all the way north to the Katmaya fast travel point in Thebes, collect the Ostraka from the leader house in Thebes, you have to sneak in there because there are high level enemies and then collect the solution here at the bridge near Thebes. That is a crit chance at full health Ostraka so it is really important. After that you should visit that shipwreck for another Ostraka and the solution will be in the port of Piraeus or in the court the smelling fish here on the shelf. While you are doing this you can also loot the Mycaean tomb of Ajax on the island of Salamis and then you should go to Corinthia, activate the fast travel point on the temple and then close by there's a sacred cave, there you will find another Ostraka riddle. The solution for that riddle is here on the tongue of that statue. Just go to that statue, press A on the tongue and you solve it. There's also another tomb close by which is Agamemnon's tomb. So if you need more points you can definitely get this and then go to the temple of Poseidon in Argolis. There's also Phidon's tomb, very easy to solve. Go to Elikia's peak then next and also do the waterfall of Styx for another ability point and then head all the way down to Olympia. Don't forget to activate the fast travel point on the temple of Zeus and then go to that waterfall, the spring of Piera. The Ostraka of that location is actually in the cave nearby and the solution will be on top of the hill north of Olympia. Go here to the left wing of that statue to solve it. There's also a very easy tomb nearby which is the smallest in the entire game. After you got that point, fast travel back to Elikia's peak and then you have to ride down with your horse all the way down to Laconia to Pydiscos camp. In Pydiscos camp there's another Ostraka riddle, get also the Tagetos overlook and the riddle solution is at the top of Mount Tagetos. Press A at the sword and you solve it. Then after that you can fast travel back to either Athens or to another island where you have a port because you will need your ship from now on. Sail with your ship to that location north of Terra. In that location you will find the Fox of Olympus in a chest underwater. Loot this weapon to get the 100% damage but health cap to 25%. After that go to Naxos. There's another Ostraka riddle in the Naxos quarry and the solution for that can be found on top of the arch of the unfinished temple near the beach. The next stop will be on Kios, so you have to travel all the way to the north with your ship to get to that ship dock here. There's the tomb very close nearby to that ship dock so I really encourage you to solve that tomb for another ability point and then you have to sneak in to the Anavatos ruin. Go to the back side of the ruin and only collect the Ostraka riddle. The solution for that can be found in Angelos cave here at the smashed ceramic pots in the middle of that cave. And last but not least we will travel to Lesbos. There's another Ostraka riddle, the last one we have to collect in the Alkidas fort. Also sneak in there because there are high level enemies so don't make any alert, just collect the riddle and then simply solve it by diving at the broken bridge. Now you finally collected all the 5 Ostrakas for crit chance at full health and for crit damage at full health. That's everything you basically need in this game. If you still need more ability points you can of course also go for the tomb of Orpheus or solve any of the other tombs. There are 22 in total in the base game and a lot of them were not close to that route. I really hope you like this new build, it's absolutely awesome. Please don't forget to subscribe, leave me a like and see you next time.